After starting the season two weeks ago at Sonoma Raceway, the cars and stars of GT America powered by AWS have made the 400 mile trek south to Long Beach. For nearly 50 years, this world famous beach party has been a celebration of the vibrant car, car culture of Southern California. The weather is perfect, befitting the picturesque setting along the shores of the Pacific Ocean. So now we say welcome to the Grand Prix of Long Beach presented by 511. Hello, my name is Ryan Marine. Calvin Fish is alongside. Amanda Busick is down in the pits on this Chamber of Commerce weather day in Southern California. Beautiful views as ever here in Long Beach, Calvin. This is wonderful to be back. First time for the series since 2019. Yeah, treat to be back. Long history with SRO and World Challenge. Uh, since dating back to 2006 on the streets of Long Beach, this is like Monaco for us. I mean, I just love the vibe out here, Long Shoreline Drive. Uh, picturesque setting and uh, what a crowd we're seeing here this weekend. Perfect racing conditions in the mid 60s. Beautiful day for racing. Beautiful field of cars oh. too. GT3, GT2 and GT4 all sharing the track together. Yeah, it's a melting pot, a real mixture, different categories. They're going to overlap at certain stages of this race. That will certainly create a curveball for the leaders. Plenty of storylines throughout this grid, but up at the very front, the front row, a couple of veterans. Johnny O'Connell first raced at Long Beach in Formula Atlantic back in 1986. And how about James Safronis? He was in the first ever series race here at Long Beach back in the World Challenge days. That was uh, in the early 2000s, early aughts. Yeah, two veterans uh, looking forward to this one, I'm sure. And uh, for James Safronis, he sleeps in his own bed tonight in this doubleheader weekend. So this is home turf. He's got his shop just down the street and uh, lots of Clients, lots of customers here, lots of fans going to be supporting him. But Johnny O, he's on a march. They got that new Audi with Ski Auto Sport and uh, put that car on the pole to start the race here this afternoon. Yeah, fantastic. Two veterans there at the front, but a couple of street course rookies, several of them, in fact, sprinkled throughout this field. Cal, what challenge lays in store for them? Well, to, to win this race, you have to be bold. You need to be bold on the brakes if you're going to make some moves. But there's such a fine line here between pushing too hard and catching one of those concrete barriers and ending your day. But one thing that is cool this year, they've actually wrapped a lot of those tire bundles with this like tire wrap and uh, this belt. And I think that will really help maybe ha help the cars glance off some of those uh, moments that they may have rather than get wrapped up in them. And we talked about the fact this is multi-class racing. That is complicated at the best of times. Street course racing, it can be even more complicated. Beautiful weather as we talked about, and standing amongst it all is our own Amanda Busick. Hey guys, when you talk about the multi-class racing, I get to stand in the mix of it. We have seven different manufacturers represented here on the streets of Long Beach, presented by 511. I love the story that you guys went in with Johnny O'Connell. He's been racing at this circuit for as long as I've been alive. We will not say that year to protect Johnny O'Connell, but you talk about him being on the pole. He said he's been looking for more, for more speed out of that Audi here this weekend. But Calvin, you said it. He calls this place our Monaco. He said, I don't care if IndyCar drivers are here. We're here. And that's exactly how they're going to race here in race number one of GT America in her second event on the season. But storylines will continue to evolve. Ryan, I love the rookies that you talked about. Justin Rothberg, his first trip here, he said it's like a dream of being able to race on a street in the streets of Long Beach in your own car, guys. Thanks so much, Amanda. Yeah, really, really cool. Talked to Justin earlier. He's done Mont uh, Montreal in Ferrari Challenge. Kind of a street course, yeah. but a different animal compared to Long yeah, Beach. Yeah, diff different rhythm around Montreal. It's a wonderful street circuit, but it's not quite got the tight confines, the kind of concrete canyons that you find here through some of the sectors. Well, let's talk about the racetrack. It is a classic. The, the, the layout has changed a little bit over the years. It's settled in basically this configuration in the year 2000, and it is a classic. You talk to drivers, they say some of this track, it flows more like a traditional uh, road course rather than a street course. It really does. Mixture of racing surfaces, as you expect on any street circuit, some real challenges in terms of the big heavy brake zones, blind approaches like down into turn one, trying to coexist there, particularly at the race start or any restart that we may have. Just shy of two miles in length, 11 very challenging corners, uh, finding the grip and, you know, really maximizing the radius through some of these corners. There is some elevation change, believe it or not, from turn six plowing down the hill into turn eight. That really makes
brakes that give it a lot of character as well. But long straightaways, big heavy brake zones, plenty of opportunity for some overtaking moves here. Some of the most beautiful vistas at any racetrack you will ever go to as well. This is Long Beach, the first of two races this weekend for GT America, powered by AWS. Great mix of cars, wonderful venue, great crowd on hand as well. And we're about to get things started. Here to give the command to start engines, the co-founder and executive chairman of 511 Tactical, Francisco Morales is down trackside to give the famous words. Drivers, start your engines! And with those words, the field starts to roar to life. GT3 and GT2, that will be the first wave past the green flag and then the GT4 field to follow. Wonderful to see the growth of GT2, certainly taking off in Europe, big, big crowds in the GT2 European Series this season. And this is the largest grid of GT2 cars we've seen stateside since the rebirth, if you will, with the GT2 category. Yeah, certainly got a lot of momentum. It's certainly growing, and I think we're going to see an even stronger field by the end of this year, and certainly uh, getting at 2025. I think they're going to be a major part of this GT America grid. Cars starting to roll away. Looks like maybe a couple of problems further back. Todd Coleman in that green Aston Martin had that door open awfully late, but it looks like it's fired up and starting to roll off. So now the crucial siding laps here for these drivers to make sure everything comes up to temperature and make sure as well that they're set to go for the first of two races in this doubleheader weekend at Long Beach. Starting grid, as mentioned, Johnny O'Connell, the veteran, he will be on the pole position alongside James Sofronis in a hometown race. Jason Daskalos rolls off on the inside of the second row. He loves street course racing next to the Long Beach debutante, Justin Rothberg. Then it's Ross West, former GT4 champion in this series, making the jump to SRO3 this year. Next to the pole sitter in the GT2 class, welcome to Dan Knox and Lone Star Racing, their first event of the season. Aaron Farhadi swept the weekend in GT2 at Sonoma. He'll have Brent Holden's Mercedes alongside. Then we get to Jason Bell, another former GT4 champion, making the step to GT3 machinery in SRO3 next to Alan Grossberg and CJ Moses. He'll be back here. It's his second start at Long Beach. The first one came several years ago in a GT4 car next to the Callaway Corvette of Marco Schultes. Then Kyle Washington rounding out the back of the grid in SRO3. A technical infraction dropped him to the back. Ray Newell on the GT4 pole. Great qualifying effort for him. Isaac Sherman had an impressive debut weekend at Sonoma. He will start 15th overall. Second in GT4 next to his team owner, Rob Holland. Then it's Todd Coleman and Kurt Swearingen back in road number nine. Road 10 on this starting grid belongs to Elias Sabo, fresh off of a race earlier this afternoon in IMSA competition, now stepping into a GT4 car next to Samantha Tan, who also jumps into a GT4 machine for a one-off appearance this weekend. Todd Perriott and Nick Shanny make up the 11th row and the final row of this grid of race cars as the field comes through. The famous hairpin, one of the iconic corners, certainly one of the most challenging ones as well. If it goes wrong here at the front of the field, it creates a stack up like you might see on the highway in LA rush hour. Yeah, it can certainly be chaotic if you attempt to make a move right there on that approach into that hairpin. Typically, it's uh, you can think it's uh, the right decision, and then suddenly it goes sideways in a hurry. But uh, hopefully, we'll see a nice disciplined race here, 40-minute sprint race. And uh, for the guys up front, Johnny O, James Afronis, they want to try and time this and get off to a nice clean start. You know, Jason Daskalos coming off a victory at Sonoma in round one, had that penalty in round two that hurt his points on day two there uh, just a couple of weeks ago. But he's always super aggressive at the start of these races. He loves the street circuit. So I've got a feeling he'd be maybe a man to look for in these opening few corners or certainly the opening laps of this race. This is one of the venues you want to have on your resume, especially a first place trophy from this place, Long Beach. Do you maybe put some of the championship thoughts in the back of your mind when you come to a venue like this one? I think you do. I, I think you really do. I mean, if there's a victory there and there's a chance for it, you want to go for it. You don't want to just say, yeah, I, I ran at Long Beach, I had a podium run. If you can say you're a race winner here, that is something very, very special and something you can talk about for years to come. So all of these drivers in this field, 
They got their thoughts on a podium, maybe a race win, but then there is the big picture of the championship that is led right now by Johnny O'Connell in SRO3 out for a nice weekend in Sonoma. The early days of this event, well, the first race held here in 1975, it was a Formula 5000 race, then transitioned to Formula 1 before the Indy cars took the headline spot that they've held ever since. But sports car racing has played a big part in the history of this race, too, over the years, Calvin. And fittingly so, because maybe no place quite like Southern California celebrates the automobile uh, anywhere in the United States. Absolutely. And to see so many manufacturers, as Amanda alluded to, in this field here today, certainly trying to strut their stuff in front of the California fans. And so many of them have stuck around for this the final major event of the day here in Long Beach. The sun is shining on this field of cars for the first of two races this weekend for GT America powered by AWS. The field starting to get into alignment as they make their way down the front straightaway in the flag stand. Troy Brown, the CEO of 511 Tactical, waves the green flag for this battle on the beach. We are racing race one of the weekend here on the streets of Long Beach. Well, a nice jump there by Johnny O'Connell off pole sitter James Safronis in that blue Audi defense there on the inside of Daskalos. Look to the inside, that's Rothberg on the outside of Safronis looking for grip. Doesn't get the acceleration run and Daskalos clears him for P3. He's able to slide into that third spot behind him. You get to the front of the GT2 field. That's all mixed up with the GT3 cars that race in the SRO3 category. Now there's the green flag for the GT4 cars as they make their way down Shoreline Drive for the first time. How about the newcomer, Isaac Sherman? He's looking aggressive here on the start. That's the Porsche. Left-hand side of the screen. He makes a bid for the lead around the outside of Gray Newell. Sherman goes to the point. Yeah, he's on the racing line there, so he's got oh, a little contact. bit more great contact there with Coleman involved. It might have been Sabo as well. Indeed it was, Elias Sabo, 511 tactical machine. Looked like maybe a little contact, possibly some damage. Is the battle for the lead in GT4, or is that a little bit further back? Actually, that's Rob Holland, who's made the pass around Gray Newell for the second spot. So Rotec Racing now runs one and two. And now on the attack, it's Kurt Swearingen in the other Cayman starting to look aggressive. Yeah, so for our pole sitter, Gray Newell there, he kind of got swamped there in the opening corner. Sherman certainly got the jump there on the start into turn one, and then Rob Holland pounced also, as you said. Rotec 1-2 right now, but in qualifying, they're extremely tight, only separated by a tenth of a second by our top three in GT4. Back of the shot, Mirko Schultes in the Callaway Corvette looked like he had a moment exiting the hairpin, cost him a ton of momentum. He slipped back to the back of the SRO3 and GT2 field. Back towards the front of this pack, though, there's Daskalos leading the battle through the fountain section. He's embroiled in a fight with Justin Rothberg in his first true street course start, certainly his first in a GC3 machine. That's the BMW coming through the picture there. Yeah, and I think Justin was really impressive on his uh, SRO debut weekend in Sonoma, had a couple of really solid runs. He and Daskalos actually got into it on day two, and it cost Daskalos a drive through penalty heard his points on day two, but Johnny O up front knows these streets that Amanda alluded to very, very well. Been coming here for three, four decades now and is leading the charge over James Safrona sitting there in P2 for GMG. A couple of outies leading the way in the SRO3 class, and if you're a fan of the Four Rings, this might be the only series stateside where you get a chance to see these cars, unfortunately, with the demise of Audi's customer racing program, or at least the winding down of that customer racing program. But clearly, it's still a really strong package, especially when you put a couple of veterans like Johnny O'Connell and James Safronis at the controls. Yeah, and I think that whole group, they've got great engineering squad there with Rossella kind of leading the charge. Johnny O said, she is the best engineer I've ever worked with, and he's working with some great ones, so that's really testimony to that group with Ski Autosport and the program that they put together. And I think Johnny O is starting to get his teeth back into motor racing. I think last year he realized that he had to get back in the gym. He's lost about 10 pounds, I think, in the off-season. He's fighting and ready to go to go after this championship this year. Looking fighting fit at the moment. Just turned in the CrowdStrike fastest lap of the race from the Rovopole position. In the meantime, we check in here sixth overall, but the leader in GT2. This is Dan Knox leading Aaron Farhadi, who was so strong at Sonoma, sweeping the weekend there. I've been a bit of a moment up in front of those guys. Maybe Ross West we saw in the same picture there. I think you're right. That was the silver GT3 spec Mercedes that looked like it might have been off the pace. In the meantime, 
This is the run into the fountain section. Turns two and three. Elias Sapo in the orange machine with Samantha Tan giving chase. We usually see her in the GT3 car in Fanatec GT competition, but making that step back to the GT4 ranks for the weekend because she wants a shot to race and win at Long Beach. Yeah, and their shop is uh, relatively close to here, so it's a natural fit for them to uh, bring out one of their GT4 BMWs, give Samantha the experience on another street circuit. Canadian flagged team, ST Racing, but in recent years, they have been operating out of a base here in Southern California. Great to see that now familiar livery, the Vincent Van Gogh Starry Night inspired paint scheme on that BMW M4 GT4. Back to the front, yeah. compressing here between the top three. Daskalos keeping tabs with the two much heralded veterans in O'Connell and Zafronis, but don't sleep on Daskalos. He doesn't have many full seasons on his resume, but he's been in this game for a while. He's been very strong in street course races over the last couple of seasons. He certainly has, and they've dropped Rothberg here a little bit, so it looks like there's a battle between these top three potentially for the win right now. That last lap, both Sofronis and Daskalos were about three or four tenths quicker than Johnny O, our leader, but he may be controlling things. 40 minute sprint, but he's still got to think a little bit about tire degradation. No pit stops, no driver changes. This is single driver, multi class sprint racing. Very much the lifeblood of this paddock and this championship through its various guises over the years. Looks like problems for Mirko Schultes in the Callaway Corvette. He's dropped down through the GT4 running order, so we'll have to keep an eye out for that. And also, a message from Race Control. We saw it on screen a moment ago. A shortcut warning to Kurt Swearingen. Don't see many shortcut no, warnings on street courses. <laughs> that is one corner you can do. We're just going through turn five right there. You can see those curbs to the inside. So he's eating those up a little bit too much. So Brian Till's uh, watching that and giving him a warning. And to clean up the Mirko Schultz's story, it looks like it might have been a transponder issue because he's now taking his spot at the back of the SRO3 train on timing and scoring once again. This is the car in question for that shortcut warning. Kurt Swearingen and his ACI Motorsports team. He's up ahead of Gray Newell now, so Gray Newell, the pole sitter, has dropped a couple of spots here in the early stages. Yeah, he's now down to P4, so off the podium right now, so great run here by Kurt Swearingen in this Porsche. Busy weekend for Heart of Racing. They've got multiple programs across the globe, including competing in the World Endurance Championship this weekend. Two series here at Long Beach as well, so Trying to spread their forces a little bit thin here, but what a top-notch operation they have. Just thinking about that coming into the weekend, how many teams can say that they're racing three times in major road racing events here this weekend? And I think it's basically Ganassi with Indy cars and sports cars here, plus uh, in the WEC and Penske with the same combination. And then you throw Penske's NASCAR program into the mix too. So they're extremely busy but Heart of Racing is right there in that rarefied air. Yeah, I think I read somewhere where Penske have like 250 <laughs> personnel uh, at racetracks this weekend, so uh, big, big effort. Justin Rothberg here. We watch him circulating the racetrack right now in the fourth position, and Amanda's got more on the rookie. Ryan, as you said, he made that advancement from Ferrari Challenge up into our season our series this season. I've been listening to his radio as we kick off this race and his team is giving him kind of point by point directions around this racetrack. Last time through turn one, he said that he was early on entry to clean that up a little bit. But when you think of a street course, it also being your third race in a series, just from a driver's perspective, Calvin, how important is a spotter around this place? Well, I think it's important that you have chemistry, Amanda, and he has that with Robbie Foley, who's coaching him this weekend. Robbie just got out of a very similar race car in the event earlier today, so he'll know exactly where the grip is, and he can really identify where Justin is placing that race car on the track in terms of his approach in here. You can see there, he's given up about two to three feet. You don't want to be on that painted line as you turn in, but just open up that radius a little bit more. That'll make the apex a little bit easier for you and allow you to get back to power sooner. So those are the little tweaks that you can have and uh, you get that trust from someone you know so well like he does with Robbie who also coached him in Ferrari Challenge. 
I do know that many of the teams do have spotters stationed around the racetrack. That maybe wasn't the case when you were running some of the street courses in your career, Cal. Well, early in the days, we never even had radio, so you were <laughs> out there in isolation. But uh, certainly, uh, so many advancements now in terms of these drivers being able to learn these circuits, such as Long Beach, on the simulator that are so representative of reality. It's not like the old days with the Sims, where it's just really kind of giving you a, a bit of a picture of it. Now you can really take from the Sim and bring it straight to the racetrack, not only in terms of the driver learning the circuit, but also the setups as well. Justin is the reigning Ferrari Challenge Trofeo Pirelli Am champion. Going back to last year, he's got his dad here supporting him this weekend. Mom couldn't make it, but I know she's watching along. I'm told she's a pretty big fan. And, uh, was thrilled to know that Justin was signing some autographs earlier this weekend. I, I saw that happen and we were having a chat when, it, when some kids came up and Justin was thrilled to be able to sign a few autographs over the course of the weekend here at Long Beach as we take a peek back into the battle for the lead in GT2. Battle for third position, I believe. It's Holden and Grossberg. Yeah, apologies, you're right. He's holding in the Mercedes, holding down the final podium positioning class at the moment. Grossberg was with us. Both of these guys actually were at Sonoma. And are coming together, I think, in great. one of the races there. Great to see uh, Brent back with GMG. Race with them a few years ago, so he's been reunited. And they do such an excellent job for their customer programs. I mean, James Sofronis loves to race. He's in this race, going for a win, but his customers come first, and they appreciate that. Looks like the leaders are catching some GT4 traffic. Amanda just sent me an update that she's been hearing a lot of chatter on the radio, preparing the leaders in the SRO3 class to be embroiled in some traffic around this racetrack. Here is Johnny O'Connell making his way through. Samantha Tan in that BMW, the first one he's able to make the move on. His lead, by the way, has grown to up over two seconds now over James Sofronis. Yeah, and that could be the traffic just playing its part a little bit. Johnny owes so much experience with multi-class racing over the years. With Corvette Racing is where he really made his name in sports car racing, just a linchpin for them. So many huge victories at some of the world's biggest races. James Safran, as you can see there, thought about a move on Samantha Tan, but thought better of it. And he loses another few cowl lengths to Johnny O running up front there. Race vision powered by AWS. Look at that. The Audi, with two different Audis, actually, um, showing the pace in two of the Daskalos sectors. close to the inside on Safronis for B2. Yeah, good spot. Safronis got balked by the traffic, and we've seen that from Daskalos over the years. If there's an opportunity, man, he will go for it. He's up to second. Well, we certainly saw James Safronis pretty aggressive in the opening rounds at Sonoma a couple of weekends ago, but I think Daskalos, if you, if you made a call, who's the most aggressive in this championship? I love the way he goes about his racing. He's so passionate. He puts everything into this program. He's putting everything into this race, but Johnny O has got a nice, healthy lead there up front as these guys battle their way through that traffic that Johnny's already seen. Now James on the back foot a little bit. Not sure he's planning on running the full season. Daskalos is, so Daskalos thinking points. Safronis looking to impress the hometown crowd. He comes to the inside of Swearingen and clears that GT4 car without too much trouble in the break zone for turn one. What an iconic picture that is through the fountain. Trimming the beautiful flowers there on the inside along the curb. It's one of those shots you instantly know what track you're looking at as soon as you see it. See the shadow starting to repair there as the sun moves around here. It creates new challenges, new nuances to this circuit. Getting through here safely. They actually painted the outside walls orange on the exit of turn five. And this next one that these guys are coming up to, turn eight just to give the drivers a little bit better visual on where the edge of the road is. Right there, you see it. The apex of that corner used to, a couple of years ago, have a really big curve, and that's gone now. It's just painted asphalt, basically, and that's opened that corner up a great deal. It has. They took the curb out a couple of years ago, but then they actually painted like a fake curb. Correct. Uh, about eight feet off the apex, and they moved that way back in, so. At the front of the GT4 field, that's where you'll find Isaac Sherman. He is starting to extend that advantage now over his teammate Rob Holland, up to over two and a half seconds, and Amanda's got more on Isaac. Matthew 
Yes, yeah, yeah, nine laps for this GT4 class, and there is Isaac Sherman leading. He announced in Sonoma that he would be racing a full season now. Rob Holland will like seeing his kid pull away from him, but you know Rob's going to save something for the end of this race. But talking to Isaac, this is his first street race ever. He talked to me, to me about how crazy the walls were. He got here, but he said they eventually disappeared. Talk about how intimidating it must be. First street race now leading. Pretty impressive stuff. He told me the same uh, quote, actually, about the walls disappearing, Amanda. So interesting that, uh, that, that that's kind of stuck with him. The thing he also told me is he got started in racing doing a bunch of circle track racing in Legends cars as well as in Modifieds, as we see uh, some more traffic here for the leaders. And so he said, I'm pretty used to driving around walls. That didn't spook me too much. It took a right. couple of laps, and then all of a sudden it became normal. Sure. I think... Um that's a great asset to have, to be able to put that to one side and not really be spooked or intimidated by these concrete walls because the trouble is if you're scared to get close to them, typically you're pinching your hands, you're binding the car up, it's not going to handle well. So um, the fact that he's able to do that, and that's his thought process, is great going in. But there you're there, you make a little bobble, they're certainly going to be there. I saw a moment ago that Jason Daskalos has the CrowdStrike fastest lap of the race, and that's important because it's the fastest lap of race one that will set the grid for race two tomorrow evening. So Daskalos, who started third, now runs second, finds himself in a position perhaps to start from the Robo pole position looking Samantha, ahead to race two. Samantha Tan there looking to the inside on Elias Salvo. He's got to make that sort of transition back to GT4 machinery again. He ran it for the last couple of seasons, but he's bumped up to GT3 in the Fanatec GT Championship. So now he's back here in a GT4 car, and uh, it's all an adjustment. It, it, it's uh, an Aston Martin platform that he's running in both championships, but there's still some subtle differences. And uh, you know, he's used to running right at the front, so he's loving running here on the streets, representing 511, of course. But you know, I'm sure if he was into the rhythm of running GT4 all year, we may see him even further towards the front of this field. This is the battle for fifth and sixth, and I do wonder how that transition has gone for. Elias, who was in a GT3 car earlier today, right before this race, actually, in the IMSA race. Different tire, much different car, to your point. And now he's got to adjust to, to the tire and also less power, less downforce, less aerodynamic and mechanical aids uh, built into that car, stepping into the GT4. Oh, that was tight there. Almost got into the back. I think it's of Newell right in front of him. Almost turned him there, coming through the hairpin. That gives him Samantha Tan around as they got GT SRO3 cars all around them as well. Yeah, here comes Kyle Washington. That's the Porsche coming through out of the SRO3 class. And see where he slots in. Looks like he wants to get past Swearingen and does. So he's now clear. Sabo and Tan side by side for position and Sabo is able to hold on. Has to, or Samantha rather, has to settle back in, but not done with the traffic. There's Ross Schwest coming through next. It's there all the time. It's constant and that makes it so hard to survive through these tight corners here. When you're looking in your mirrors, you've still got those concrete barriers right on the side of the race car. Ross Schwest won the GT4 championship in GT America back in 2022. This is his first year at the SRO3 level. Making the move here on Elias, who he fought many, many times in the GT4 ranks over the years. Ross actually won a race on the road at Sonoma. Unfortunately, the car was found to be a little bit underweight in post-race tech, so he lost the victory to Johnny O. His Newell down to the inside of Swearingen, they touch. Some bodywork flies there momentarily, but he is on for that final podium spot. What role will traffic play in this battle as we approach the halfway mark in what has been a thrilling start to the weekend for GT America, powered by AWS. Newell taking a peek in that heart of racing Aston, but here come some of the faster class cars working their way around the outside. Schwest able to clear, as is the second Mercedes, and then not too far behind. Here comes Mirko Schultes as well, with some damage to the front of that Callaway Corvette. It's been a busy week for that group. I understand they had to go to a local fab shop to get some pieces made after some damage they sustained a couple of weeks ago in Sonoma, but he's such a passionate racer. Whatever it takes to get on the on the track here this weekend. Swearing it looked like he had his hands full. The rear of that came and started to slide as he put the power down out of the fountain section. That car, 
perhaps a bit recalcitrant at this stage of the race. Gray Newell looks like he's found some of the pace that he used to get to the GT4 class pole today. Yeah, it seems like his car's really coming in for a sweet spot now. He's kind of got his elbows out and kind of forceful racing, trying to get back to the front of his back. Those two Porsches from Rotec, they are a long way down the road here. Battle for the final step of the podium. The pole sitter, Gray Newell, putting the pressure on. Third place running, Kurt Swearingen. But how long can Kurt hang on? He's been under a ton of pressure. Doing a nice job, though. Then you see the ebb and flow with the different manufacturers where they may have an advantage, whether it's gear ratios, acceleration off some of these low and medium speed corners. Out of that tight hairpin, such an important corner because it leads to the front straight, which as you can see isn't straight at all, but that's what they call it, right by the pits here in Long Beach. Crucial to get a jump out of that hairpin, though, to power get down and not leave you vulnerable in this brake zone. Oh, so important there to get the power down. It's so difficult. Your hands are really winding through that tight hairpin, and then you try to blend the power as you're unwinding the steering out of the race car. But you do it too early, you're going to light up the rear tires. Just past the halfway mark. At the front, Johnny O'Connell, but look what's looming in the background. Jason Daskalos took three-tenths of a second out of Johnny O's lead the last time around. It won't be long here at this rate, Calvin, until we have a battle for the lead, if this continues. Yeah, and with that lap where he took that, brought that gap down as a new fastest race lap, so again, he's consolidating what would be pole position for tomorrow by claiming that fast lap of the race. Here you see it is. Let's hear more about Jason Daskalos with Amanda. Yeah, Ryan, and in talking to both of these guys this weekend, Johnny O'Connell and Jason Daskalos, both of them have identified each other as who will be the competition this season in this championship. And in talking with Jason, felt really good coming off of Sonoma, was very excited to get here to the streets of Long Beach, but said what's really going to take in this race is who can save the tires. Now that we're over halfway through this race, when does that become an issue? Well, it's going to get an issue as we get deeper and deeper in this race, we stay green. So, yeah, it's only a 40-minute sprint. There's not a lot of tire deck here at the streets of Long Beach. The tires seem to hang in there, particularly these Pirelli P0s. But, yeah, if there's going to be an advantage, it's probably going to come down into that last five, ten minutes of this 40-minute sprint. Two drivers that have been around this game quite a while, they know how to take care of their tires to make sure they've got a sharp weapon to fight with late in the race. Look at this, Johnny O'Connell just answered back with his personal best lap of the race, and it was marginally quicker than Daskalos. So the message has been delivered that Daskalos is closing in, and Johnny O'Connell promptly finds a little extra pace. Yeah, you just feel like he's managing things. He wants to try and keep that gap right there at two seconds, because what that allows you to do is have a little bit more of a comfort factor when you get to that lap GT4 traffic. Doesn't mean you got to panic. You don't have to force the issue. You can easily lose four or five car lengths through some of these sectors. A lot of drivers turning in their best laps of the race. That last time by Sofronis did as well, as did Kyle Washington, who's on Really strong pace, actually, right now. Just ran a 120.3. That's within a half a second of what Johnny O'Connell ran one lap ago. So good to see for Kyle, who's back in the fifth spot right now, chasing Justin Rothberg. And he's not too far back, so there could be a fight for fourth and fifth before it's all said and done, too. Yeah, Washington is absolutely flying after that technical problem following uh, qualifying tech. So he started at the back of the pack, and he's now cut his way through this field up to P5 and uh, making some moves. Great stuff. A little bit of traffic here for Johnny O'Connell. That'll be Nick Shanny in the Karis Kallis race team, BMW M4 GT4. No trouble there. That's where you want to catch the traffic, down the long straightaway. To turn number one. Daskalos might not be so fortunate. This is a part of the track that tightens up quite a bit. It's basically a single groove through that section of the track. And even if you're in the much more powerful SRO3 class, there might not be much you can do until you get to the next big straightaway. Yeah, you have to be patient. You gotta recognize where the speed is in these race cars and the delta, the difference between them. 
and uh, recognize you can't just drive over the top. They can't hit the disappear button at the same time. So that's where you're going to lose those three, four car lengths. And that's why Johnny O wants to try and keep that gap at the front at about two seconds as we shul see Schultz and Schwest carving their way through the field. Next up between them, the top two in the GT4 ranks. Rotec Racing, Rob and Roland Tech is what Rotec Racing signifies. The Rob is Rob Holland. That's the driver of this car right here. And a good friend and longtime partner in this program. Back when they were running at the Nürburgring, uh, they uh, affixed their initials to this operation. Came stateside a couple of years ago. And Rob Holland has been a championship contender in this series every year. He's not running the full season this year, but especially on street courses, we've seen him be very strong in the past. Well, I think that's what makes Sherman's performance so impressive when you take someone of Rob Holland's pace, experience in the same race car, and he's leading him, not by a lot, but he is leading the charge. So it's really amazing to see this uh, young man come into our championship, sweep the weekend at Sonoma, and then come up against the challenge of uh, Rob Holland, and uh, so far, so good. This battle has been raging since the drop of the green flag. Ray Newell, who started on pole, dropped back to fourth in the first couple of laps, but he's been trapped here behind Kurt Swearingen ever since. Kurt doing a really nice job to keep the Aston at bay because I do think there might be a little pace in the Aston <laughs> and maybe patience starting to run thin down in the hairpin. Just a love tap, just a love tap. Just seems like the Aston can roll a little bit more mid-corner speed there. Gray's just trying to keep as tight as he can because once they sprint off that hairpin, it looks like the Porsche gaps him a little bit. Swearingen, his second year in this championship. Newell's been at it for a few more seasons. He finished fourth in the points one year ago and won three races. Putting Ray and James at Sonoma, he felt that, you know, maybe Gray is getting close to that moment where he may step up to GT3 competition full time next year. He's getting more and more experience running in a championship over in Europe. More and more testing. Here is close. This is turn five, the run down to turn six. Newell side by side with Swearingen. But Swearingen has the preferred line in this run down to turn six. It's downhill, it's a little bit off camper. Swearingen slips wide and that opens the door up for Gray Newell. Side by side again and once more it's swear engine on the preferred side of the racetrack oh that was awfully close between the two of them and gray newell backed out he had to back out he just mistimed it a little bit i think he was just trying to carve across the tail and do a kind of over under move as they came off the corner but had to give up the throttle a little bit and there you see the gap is immediately created by swear engine and also look because samantha tan has made the pass on elias sabo so she's up now into the fifth spot and has closed in on these two while they've been squabbling for position she's come so far under the tutelage of nick johnson who's a kind of coach and mentor and now she's got neil verhagen top young bmw factory pilot that she co-drives with in fanatec gt so she's got great people to really soak up the information from and it's not just driving behind the wheel it's every aspect of being a professional race car driver from the mental aspect from the physical aspect being ready to go and uh, she's really come on gangbusters over the last couple of seasons also in her corner is john miller who is a great driver in his own right but helps to run the team does jump behind the wheel from time to time too so it's a pretty solid brain trust at her disposal there at st racing settling down just a little bit but Newell seems like he can close back up on Swearingen which you'd have to think means he may have a little bit more pace but Kurt is just hanging on to that final podium run you know you talk about wanting to win on the streets of Long Beach but there's such a huge difference from a racing driver's psyche from a podium to a P4 finish Harry, the leaders are expecting there to be 10 more laps in this race. Newell appears to be off the pace because Samantha Tan now has pulled alongside. It looked like Newell was catching Swearingen again, but something seems perhaps to be amiss. That was strange. Yeah, he lost a lot of ground there on the run from uh, turn eight all the way down to turn nine. See what happens on this straightaway. See if he does have a technical issue of some kind. This is where it's tough for Johnny O trying to cut his way through this traffic. Someone's embroiled in their own battle, may not see you coming. Couple of fast
Monster cars coming through. GT2, Mercedes, that's Holden. And the overall leader, Johnny O'Connell, that catches Samantha Tan out. She's stuck out wide. Still, it isn't done. I'm not sure she knows O'Connell's there. Look at this, and here comes Daskalos. He's right there. That two-second gap has gone away just as quick as that. It was 3.2 seconds across the line. Now they're almost nose to tail. Now we've got a fight for the overall lead on our hands as Daskalos claws to the inside of Samantha Tan. That did cost him some momentum on this straightaway here. The run down into turn number six. And there's Zafronis. It's a three-car battle for the lead all of a sudden. Well, that's multi-class racing for you, especially here at Long Beach. The tight confines of a street course, unforgiving. James looking super smooth there. Realizes that the race is not over for the potential win. Just over 10 minutes to go, final quarter of the race. That would mean a lot to James to win here. GMG, especially their tuning division, is based in the greater LA Watch area, it looks like he's, he's got a shot. Time it. He pulls alongside of Daskalos, now has to tuck back in because they've caught some of that traffic we've been talking about. This next car might be an even greater challenge because the GT2 car is a rocket ship in a straight line compared to the GT3 machines, but they've got more downforce. They should be faster in the corners. Here comes Daskalos, able to get to the inside, and Zafronis follows him through. Yeah, those GT2 machines just don't have the downforce, so they're going to suffer in the brake zones compared to this SO, SRO3 class. SRO3, a catch-all for a bunch of different uh, GT3 homologations. New cars and old cars alike. Square engine muscled out of the way a little bit there by O'Connell. That's going to check up Daskalos. Here comes Sofronis now. Watch the Audi looking to the outside. Now to the inside. Back to the right he goes. Can't find a, a way past Jason Daskalos. Fantastic stuff. Johnny O had to get his elbows. Had to force the issue on Swear Engine. He wanted to make it clean, but he had to go. Otherwise, the lead could have been gone. That's a good part of the track for Daskalos in the Mercedes, as you see, in a race vision powered by AWS. He's got the quickest middle sector of the race so far. Three cars coming through your shot right here. First second and third overall with less than 10 minutes to go. Sector three belongs to O'Connell, as you see on Race Vision, powered by AWS, but we're talking fractions of a second. There's not much between the two Audis and the Mercedes. Johnny O got the power down beautifully there on the exit of turn 11, gets that leap. And that will relate to more terminal speed by the time you get down to the brake zone. Just shy of 160 miles an hour as you get to that brake pedal, slow things down. Tight, precise, got to be patient through here, through the fountain. Does not look like there's any traffic looming on this lap. Does that give a reprieve for the race leader, Johnny O'Connell, who once held an advantage over three seconds ahead of Daskalos and Safronis, but that has compacted in a big way. Now less than two seconds separates the three of them. Total change in dynamic. Right now, Johnny O is not having to be defensive with his line, so he can still run very fast lap time. If Daskalos gets any closer, he'll have to start compromising. That may open up an opportunity for Safronis. Knox continues to lead in GT2. Sherman all by his lonesome out in front of his teammate in the GT4 ranks, which means the best battle on the racetrack is this one. First, second, and third in SRO3. O'Connell, Daskalos, Safronis, the three veterans. Not a surprise to see those with a bit of gray in their hair excelling on a street <laughs> course like this. Johnny O won't mind you saying that, that's for sure. But it just seemed like the ratio they got with that Audi, it just seems to pull beautifully off that hairpin. It's not like he's in a low gear and having to grab immediately another one as he accelerates off the corner. And the pace continues to increase. Lap time's dropping. Johnny O'Connell with the new crown strike, fastest lap of the race. Hot on his heels, Jason Daskalos with his personal best. Same for James Safron, his top three, faster than they've been all race long. What a credit to Pirelli for bringing a tire that continues to perform this deep into a sprint race. Well, the cars are getting lighter. You're burning off the fuel load, and theoretically, that should make a faster race car. But typically, with the tire, it's starting to degrade at a faster rate than the advantage you get from the weight. But not so with this Pirelli P0 on the streets of Long Beach. It is performing beautifully. 
There's the confirmation. Crown Strike fastest lap belongs to Johnny O'Connell, but look what lies ahead. That's some GT4 traffic. We've seen already what a difference that can make, and that's the battle for the GT4 lead. It suddenly has shrunk. Sherman and Holland, two teammates, fighting for the lead at Long Beach. So close together. What does Johnny O tries to back up Daskalos here? Just needs a good clean exit. He should clear these cars very easily down this front stretch. Over looking up. for the draft, looking for every inch of performance. O'Connell to the outside. Daskalos follows. Looks like Sophronis is dropping off of the top two just a little bit. Overall leaders will play through the GT4 leaders, or at least they'll try to. Sophronis, though, is going to be stuck. That takes him out of the fight for the lead, at least for the moment. Now he does find a way past Rob Holland, and that costs Rob dearly as Sherman has opened that lead back again. Yeah, that was beautifully played by Sherman, who does not have a ton of experience like this in multi-class racing on a street circuit, so he handled that nicely. That's given him a bit of a breather over his teammate and team boss. Swept the weekend back at Sonoma. Did Isaac Sherman on debut? He is undefeated in this championship. This is as close as Daslow has been, and Johnny O was compromising the entry there a little bit. Can he get off the corner? By doing it, he had his hands tight and he couldn't get back to power. Here comes Daskalos. Jason Daskalos in the Mercedes, pulls alongside the veteran Johnny O'Connell. Daskalos with the preferred line into the, the brake zone and he takes the lead away from the Audi driver. That was just that Johnny O didn't have the gap. He didn't feel he could run out really wide and open up the door on the entry to turn eight. He was slow coming off and Daskalos pounces. Ah, but O'Connell has been strong out of the hairpin over the course of this race. Five minutes to go. Daskalos leading O'Connell and Johnny got a pretty good run. Can he set him up now? The big break zone, the best passing opportunity. Turn number one right here. Daskalos guards up just a little bit. O'Connell not close enough to pull out a line. Yeah, Johnny, who hasn't followed that Mercedes into the break zone yet here today, so now he's got to weigh it up and see if he's got an advantage there. Can he make it happen here with just two or three laps to go? Oh, he'll be fuming to have given up the lead this late in the going. That said, that team's mantra this year is take what the race gives you. If you could stack podiums on top of one another, there's a good chance you'll be fighting for a championship come the season finale in Indianapolis. O'Connell, I don't know if he's thinking about that or not right now. He's got a chance to win in Long Beach. Yeah, and that is huge. I think there's three and a half laps to go looking at the time left on the clock, and Daskalos looks comfortable. His car is working well, and now he has the track position. Oh, yeah, and now he also knows he no longer has pole for tomorrow. That was taken away, so now that he's clear, maybe he can put that head down a little bit and go for the crowd strike fastest lap and tomorrow's Rover pole. Yeah, he's not intimidated at all. He's running his lines, he's hitting his marks. Now the next goal, Nick Short will be on the radio to him saying, see if you can pull something out. We'd love to get that pole for tomorrow. Jason Daskalos has been runner up in SRO3 each of the past two seasons, but he's going for the championship this year and just reset the fastest lap of the race at a 119.5. He has got the hammer down. Johnny O is digging deep, but Daskalos is looking comfortable here. He's finding every inch of the road and using it, using all of the curbs. Car is hooked up late in the going. And this is a team racing with heavy hearts. The crew chief dealing with a very serious cancer diagnosis. Jason Daskalos was able to win, and it was an emotional win in the season opener at Sonoma. How special would it be to add another one here at Long Beach? Look at this. He has gapped Johnny O. Deep on the brakes. He is on it right now. He is feeling it. This Mercedes is underneath him, and he is using it. Straight. O'Connell continuing his pursuit, but Jason Daskalos has taken that advantage up to one second and it continues to grow. Sofrotis in the background, losing ground relative to the top two here. O'Connell was able to play it pretty even with Daskalos that time by, actually cut into the deficit by a fraction of a second, but just a couple of laps remain here in race one of the weekend at the Grand Prix of Long Beach, presented by 511. What does Johnny O have up his sleeve here? Can he dig deep? Has he seen any weak point in that Mercedes? 
time is not on his side. Mercedes versus Audi, two of the premier auto manufacturers from Germany doing battle in car crazy California here. Looks like O'Connell might be closing in ever so slightly. Down the hill they come for what we expect to be the penultimate time. Jason Daskalos, though, continues to hold the advantage, but from up over a second, it's down now to just six tenths. Johnny is keeping him honest, and he needs to do this. He needs to hope that that traffic may create the little opportunity, but he's got to be close enough to pass, and he is close enough. He is closing in on this Mercedes. Oh, yeah, O'Connell getting closer. We expect the white flag this time by. GT4 traffic in the form of Nick Shanny looms just up the road. Flashing the headlights is Daskalos as he comes under the starter stand. White flag waves less than two miles to go on the streets of Long Beach. Look at the dust fly as they run offline there. Down in the brake zone. They look very evenly matched there in the brakes. Daskalos is just using every inch of the road. Watch him climb the curb through here. Up and in the flower bed. O'Connell was a half a second faster on that last lap. What was the gap? Half a second. It can happen. O'Connell started to close in once again. Not sure they're going to get traffic before the checkered flag here. It's up there. He's just in front of them. But I think there may be enough of a gap. But who knows? You could come into that final sector and see traffic. Daskalos. Can he hang on for his second win of the year? Halfway through the final lap, Knox continues to lead in GT2. Sherman continues to lead in GT4. But the SRO3 fight is by no means settled with just a couple of quarters to go. Daskalos into the break zone. O'Connell again closes in to within a car length. Just a few more quarters to go for Jason Daskalos. The left-hand bend of turn 10 to the hairpin of turn 11. Daskalos puts the power down out of the hairpin and powers his way towards the start finish line. O'Connell starting to draw closer, but it won't be enough. The checkered flag waves and Jason Daskalos wins race one of the weekend at the Grand Prix of Long Beach. Second place to Johnny O'Connell. James Sofronis will complete the SRO3 podium in third place. And an emotional result for that CRP Racing team. Now we check in here in GT4. Once again, Rob Holland is closed in on his young charge, but it won't be enough. He was perfect to start the week, the season out in Sonoma, and he keeps it perfect 400 miles south in Long Beach. The win in GT4 goes to Isaac Sherman. He is three for three in his GT America career. And now we check in at the leader in GT2, making his first appearance of the season. Welcome back to the championship to Lone Star Racing and Dan Knox out of the final corner one more time. The second Mercedes in the picture coming to take the checkered flag about as straight away ahead of his closest pursuer. Knox takes the GT2 win over for Hadi here in Long Beach. That was a motor race, that was fun. Green to checkered with no full course yellow. Impressive. I love it. What a day for Jason Daskalos. That was a fantastic battle. He and Johnny put on there. Sofrona's in the wings, in the shadows, but didn't quite have enough to push for the victory. Well, we mentioned the story a moment ago in passing, but CRP Racing Crew Chief Sheldon Miller fighting cancer, a difficult diagnosis that came in prior to the season. And it was a very emotional Jason Daskalos in victory lane after his win in Sedoma. This one, without a doubt, is for Sheldon. We highlighted the three veterans starting up front. Really, I think we paid more attention to O'Connell and Sofronis than we did to Daskalos. That changes tomorrow. We've all taken notice of how good Jason is on the street courses over the years. He is a master at the beach. He certainly was. And uh, with that fast lap, he'll start from the point tomorrow. So we thought Johnny O was going to control it from the front all the way through. And then he just had that little bobble, kind of compromised his entry to turn eight. And Dasklo saw it and passed immediately and was through. And then he got into a rhythm. It seemed like Dasklo's got stronger once he got to the front. Absolutely agree. There's the smile. 
This man is so passionate about this racing. There's the emotion we've been talking about. This one will mean a great deal. Here's Johnny O'Connell. Great respect between the two of them. And Amanda mentioned it earlier. The two of them identified the other as the likely rival for the title this year. But still, there's that great camaraderie. This this class has just been so much fun the last couple of years. It's just so much depth in all of the classes within the, the championship. It's really fun. And it's a great mix, too, because you've got established veterans like the Johnny O'Connells and James Sophronis of the world for some of the newcomers to challenge themselves against, test themselves against. And same is true in GT4, where, you know, in the form of the two teammates, Rob Holland, he's been around the block a few times. He's won at a high level all around the world. And now his young charge, Isaac Sherman, showing what he can do up against the team boss. Well, we talked about the Jason Daskalo story already. Let's hear from the race winner himself with Amanda. And right, I don't know if you saw, we also had James Sofronis come over here and congratulate Jason Daskalos on his drive. And it was about five minutes to go when you were able to make that pass on Johnny O'Connell. How long did you set that one up, Jason? Well, listen, I mean, we both had pretty equal cars. In the, I mean, in the beginning, he had a better car. Mine came to me late in the race. I had a great car at the end. And a little bit of traffic played in my hands. And, you know, that's racing, right? You were greeted crew chief Sheldon Miller and uh, you were quoted this weekend as saying that everyone's putting a little more extra effort into this season how much of that was on display here today oh I mean sorry I'm gonna get emotional um, <laughs> I mean you know Sheldon and I've been together 18 years and he's family we're family and and we're just working extra hard this year we're really focusing and, and doing everything we can. Yeah, we so, I just want to add, Ryan, uh, Sheldon did look at the camera as he's doing right now, holding up that number one and saying, hi, Mom. We told you it'd be emotional. It certainly was. You could see what it means to these two, not just to win amidst this horrible fight, but also to win here of all places, a special, special place. Special win. Yeah, really cool. Let's take a look at provisional results from the first race of the weekend. And a reminder, if you liked that, and why wouldn't you? We'll do it again tomorrow for race number two. Jason Daskalos, your winner by less than three-tenths of a second over Johnny O'Connell. Then it's James Sifronis, Justin Rothberg. Kyle Washington completes the top five. Keep an eye on him tomorrow. He was really moving up through the field today. Mirko Schultes, Rosh West, and Jason Bell wrapping up the SRO3 results for the day. I think we got a chance to hear from another race winner. I believe it's Isaac Sherman now with Amanda. And Isaac, in talking to Rob Holland ahead of the weekend, he said that you were just such a quick study. I know this was your first street race. You told Ryan and I that the walls finally disappeared for you. How do you just show up and dominate? I mean, honestly, I just, I didn't even know how it was going to be. <laughs> I came, tried my best, and just was kind of really focused on hitting my lines, uh, talking with Rob. He has some experience here, and he kind of gave me some tips here and there, and, and it paid off at the end. So I'm happy about it. Congratulations, Ryan. Ryan, three races in, three wins. We might be on to a natural here. Batting a 1,000 to start the season. And remember, when he turned up at Sonoma, it wasn't a done deal that he right. would be doing any more races. He made the announcement there. Yep, I'm in for the full season, and I think we're in store for something special. Here are your GT4 results. Sherman over Holland by less than a second. A couple of teammates in Caymans. And look at that, a sweep of the podium for the Porsche Cayman platform. Yeah, they were strong here. Newell from the pole uh, just dropped a little bit in his Aston Martin. Still a really strong run. Gave Swearingen a great battle for that po final podium spot. Samantha Tan, really nice run for a top five finish. Yeah, she and Sabo had a good battle going. Ended up 22 seconds apart, so not quite sure what happened there. But Sabo ends up in sixth ahead of Perry on Shani and Coleman, who had an early call to the pit lane and did not return to the racetrack. Well, we mentioned three classes. That means three winners, the third of which has found Amanda. And Ryan, he just said, I like showing back up and finding a win. And uh, you in the GT2 machine, racing around GT3, GT4 machinery. Talk about that from your perspective. Well, I'm familiar with driving a GT3 car over the last few years, and, um, since 2015. But the street circuits have always been one of my favorites. I always seem to do well at them. 
Uh, last win in the street circuit was 10 years ago when I was racing a lot in Detroit. I've always wanted to come back here to Long Beach and to see how well we could do, and we just so excited how it came back from the stadium, which was running fantastic. We had the car set up so well, and uh, we per persevered, and we won today. It was great. Welcome back, so Dan. Excited. Thank you. Fantastic result there for Dan Knox, and great to see the Lone Star team in the paddock again. Great operation. They really are. They're top notch. AJ Peterson does a wonderful job there in setting up these Mercedes, and uh, great to see Dan back and on top of the podium. It was a really good finish, actually. I misspoke earlier. Aaron Farhadi kept Dan Knox honest. 2.2 seconds. The gap. Aaron, who swept the weekend in Sonoma, told me earlier this weekend he's not sure he's got the budget to go any further than that, but this is a promising young talent. So if you're thinking about who you might be able to step up and support, Aaron Farhadi certainly looking for a little help to keep his strong season going. Brent Holding completing the podium. Alan Grossberg and CJ Moses. Good to have CJ back in the paddock after only running a handful of races last year. Hope to see more of CJ before the end of the season. Well, Johnny O'Connell started on pole. He put on a show for us. Great battle with Jason Daskalos. Let's hear his side of it now with Amanda. And Johnny, before we go here today, just want to go back to the back and forth between you and Jason. Uh, he took the lead with five minutes to go there, but you said ahead of the weekend that Jason was going to be a tough competitor this season. How do you hold him off tomorrow? Well, he starts in front of him. Uh, it's the better question is how is he going to hold me off? I, I, you know what? I thought we had it. We had three plus second, and then you know uh, somebody not checking their mirrors and that kind of. You know, it's part of the game. So uh, anyway, you know what? What fun racing, you know, very respectful between us. And uh, and so, yeah, you know, what? we hopefully make our car a little bit better. You know what? The car's rolling underneath the tent. And, uh, you know, we, we, we if you didn't like that race, you don't like sports. I don't know. That's exciting as it gets. Thank you, Johnny. Couldn't agree more, Johnny. Thanks so much for putting on the show. Thanks to Daskalos, too, and the rest of the field, for that matter. As we look at highlights from the first race of the weekend, here at Long Beach. O'Connell from the Rova pole position was able to consolidate his advantage. The big move here was the fight for second, third, and fourth. It looked like Daskalos actually might get shuffled back behind Rothberg, but was pretty aggressive through the fountain, able to get that position back. Did get shuffled to third, actually started third, then made the move there for second after some traffic held up. James Sofronis a little bit. Good battles in GT4 too with Kurt Swearingen and Gray Newell. Seemingly all race long. Yeah, that was a fantastic battle. Both of those drivers wanted that final podium spot. The largey bargy there through the final hairpin, but that's all good in street racing, I think. Yeah, no hard, no foul at that point in the race. Samantha Tan and Johnny O'Connell. This was a big moment here in traffic. Multi-class racing. Made a big impact on this one. O'Connell was able to get through there. That looked like that caught Daskalos out, but the favor was repaid just a few laps later. There is uh, Swearingen coming together a little bit with O'Connell, and Daskalos went on the attack not long after that. Sweeping around, coming to the inside. O'Connell gave just enough room, and Daskalos late on the brakes, able to make the corner took the lead with about five minutes to go. He would never look back, took the checkered flag by two tenths of a second ahead of Johnny O'Connell. The win in GT4 to Isaac Sherman. And then in the GT2 class, Dan Knox in his return to the championship, piloting his Lone Star Mercedes to the top step of the podium. Emotional celebration in victory lane. This is Daskalos marking the moment and the accomplishment, but a lot on his mind in that moment right there. Well, like Johnny O'Connell said, if you didn't like that, I don't know what to <laughs> tell you. We get to do it again tomorrow. That's the good news. Hope you join us for race two from right here in Long Beach, California.